Now the season of Shohei kept rolling Friday night. Dodgers opening up a three game set in Denver fresh off clinching the NL West for the 11th time in 12 years. Oh there's that guy the unavoidable prominent part of the Dodgers highlight Shohei Otani with two runners on Browns went through the right side is 127th RBI this season Dodgers up four to one. But Otani's on base with Mookie Betts up and Otani the world's greatest showman wants a bag steals second. His 57th stolen base this season, setting a record amongst Japanese-born players. Breaking one held by Ichiro, and then on the throw, Otani gets the third. Dodgers go up 5-1. to one. Top six, now 6-2. Two, two runners in scoring position for Shohei. Change-up belt high is a really bad idea against that dude. 436 feet away, Otani's 54th homer of the season, tying Babe freaking Ruth. For most in a season in a player's first year with the team, Ruth with the 1920 Yankees. Otani now up to 130 ribbies on the year. Dodgers, in very related news, win comfortably 11 to 4. So, what's left for Shohei? Great question, Sports Center viewer. How about a triple crown? Another four hit day, creeping closer to it. He's just percentage points behind Luis Arise for the NL lead in batting average. There hasn't been a triple crown winner in the National League since Joe Ducky Medwick in 1937. All right, we got something you must SC. Incredible moments between the Phillies and Nationals Friday night. Stone Garrett making his first plate appearance since August 23rd, 2023. Let's take it back. Garrett carted off the field at Yankee Stadium with a fractured fibula 13 months ago. Garrett clearly emotional leaving the field and you obviously can imagine why. Back to Friday, Garrett with an unbelievable moment in his first at bat. Back in the majors, Garrett hammers it towards left field for the two-run homer. Garrett, fire it up. Look at the emotion, rightfully so. And Garrett, homer is on the first plate appearance. Take a listen to what Garrett had to say after the game. I can't describe it. I mean, you said a year ago I broke my leg and I went from playing on the field to barely, I couldn't walk. I couldn't walk. I had to relearn how to walk. Uh, I blacked out when I yelled at running the first and uh, I don't remember much after that but I remember hugging McKenzie in the dugout and I went inside hug all the trainers because those are the guys that took care of me and my family I mean it was great it was a great experience you mentioned the people that you've leaned on throughout this process who do you want to shout out that that helped you get back here my parents uh, my mom my mom came to stay with me for three weeks uh, she went to go get me food man she took care of me she <laughs> Mom's always going to be there, isn't she? Yeah, shout out to my mom. I love you, mom. I love you. I love you. Ugh, the emotion. Shout out to mom. I mean, that makes your heart warm. Gatorade bath and well worth it. Nationals win it 9-1. to one. Barely a month ago, August 20th, they were plus 3,300 to make the playoffs. Three bucks would have won you 100. Oh, but those Tigers caught fire at the right time. 30-11 and 11 in the last 41. A win here would clinch a playoff berth. Analyst and former Tiger Andy Dirks was ready pregame. I saw a guy, they clinched this the other day. He couldn't handle a cigar smoke. Yeah, but he's out uh, interviews like, <coughs> so we got to practice like we play, baby. If this is not a win, do you understand what's going to happen to your social media? All we do is win. Hey, I mean, let's see if uh, Dirks' words hold up. Bottom five, no score. Matt Veerling up with the bases loaded. Fans sensing something's brewing, and they were right. Wild pitch brings home Jake Roberts. The longest tenured Tiger scores the opening run from third. Tigers up 1-0. Same at bat. Veerling, no hits in the at bat, but Sackfly will do two runs. He gets in on the ribbies. Tigers double their lead. It's 2-0. And now at this point, you know, they can start counting the outs. Bottom seven, it's 2-1. Best bat in the lineup. Riley Green up with runners at the corners. Got a lot of this one at Comerica. 4-12 the dead center. Just misses a home run. He'll take an RBI double. Tigers tack on another lead of 4-1 as we head to the ninth. Top nine. Two outs. Fans back on their feet. Again, this team was 10 games back seven weeks ago. Jason Foley into close. Andrew Vaughn. Fly ball to right. Wincel Perez. Parker Meadows. Near disaster. But it's F9 in the box score. Tigers win all the same. Here's how the final out sounded with Jason Benetti on the call. Perez got it! The Tigers, for the first time in 10 years, are going to the playoffs. It's actually happening. D 
Detroit baseball. Tigers win 4-1. They clinch a playoff spot. Joined now by a man who's going to have champagne coming out of his pores for the next few days, and I don't think he minds. Tigers manager A.J. Hinch, fresh off Detroit, snapping a playoff drought that dates back a decade. A.J., being honest, I didn't think seven weeks ago you and I would be having this conversation. 31-11 and 11 in the last 42. Man, at what point did you realize that playoff baseball might be a possibility this season? Man, I tell you, we we did stack a lot of good days together, and and, you know, I tried to keep this team understanding that Good days turn into good series. They turn into good weeks. And then you looked up in September and all of a sudden we were still on that page. You guys show that say the playoff or playoff races. Right. And as we started to chip away a little bit, um, you know, we, we started to feel it a little bit. And the more we we won, the more we wanted to get to the ballpark the next day and see if we could could finish this off. And we did in, in, a, in front of an incredible crowd here in Detroit. It's a fifth postseason berth for you as a manager, first in Detroit. Given the route here, how does the feeling of this clinch compare? Oh, man, you know, it feels like it's my first one all over again because this team, you know, when it got into September and then into mid-September and you started seeing the chance that we would, you know, we might factor in, I just wanted it so badly for the players and for this organization. You know, it's been a long time for our fans. It's been a long time, you know, not a lot of these players. I've won, I think one or two guys that have played in, in the postseason. Um, I wanted it so badly to, to end the right way. And, and it did here at home. So I, you know, for me, it's like, it's, it's, a, it's, it's more energy. It's, it's a, it's like doing it all over again for the first time, because these guys uh, um, are celebrating, you know, the way they should for the first time taste in October. You're heating up through September. You've managed deep playoff runs before. When the celebration dies down, your shirt and the ones all the guys are wearing says October ready. What above all else must happen for you to continue this into October for a material amount of time? Yeah, we've, we've just got to we've got to show up tomorrow the same way that we always have. And we will. I mean, I obviously, you know, the stakes I keep saying to the media, our stakes, we know the stakes. We know what's at stake. We know what what's in front of us. I mean, obviously we've played it at both places that we may play in Baltimore last week or in Houston earlier this season in front of packed houses. I mean, obviously October and the introductions and the, and, and all the, 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 you know, the, the attention surrounding the playoffs will be new for our guys. I'm going to try to keep it as normal as possible for this group and, and, and see where it takes us. You know, we're, no one really expected us to be here. We always thought we were building towards this. Um, the fact that it's happened this quickly in the last couple of months is, um, is is one of the highlights of my career. Well, it's a fantastic sports town when things are going well. And for you and the Tigers, things are going well. Thanks so much for joining us here on SportsCenter. All the best, AJ, and who knows, maybe you'll be washing shampoo out of your hair again sometime in the coming weeks. All right, thanks for having me. Last chance for the Sox with two outs in this ninth inning. And that could do it. Fly ball to right center field. The catch is made, and it's official. That is loss number 121, and the 2024 White Sox now have more losses than any team in modern baseball history. There is a lot to celebrate in baseball in 2024. Shohei's 50-50, Tigers' incredible turnaround. We just saw Stone Garrett's emotional return. It all feels like a wide-open postseason. The White Sox didn't offer much to celebrate unless you have ties to the 62 Mets. On a night when Detroit toasts the town, an improbable playoff berth, the zero-sum game that is sports was underscored. That win was also Chicago's 121st loss, a record for this century or last. Tim Kirkshin is the exact voice we need for context. The expansion 1962 Mets have long been the modern standard of futility with their wonderfully symmetrical 40 and 120 season. A team so bad, its manager Casey Stengel once said, can't anybody here play this game? Unfortunately, the White Sox are breaking records this year and it's not the right ones. And now appropriately, 62 years later, the White Sox have surpassed the Mets as the new symbol of awful. They are B-A-D bad. Errors, misplays defensively. What's happening here is embarrassing. A laughing stock of Major League Baseball. 
The White Sox, who debuted in 1901 and made the playoffs back-to-back years in 2020 and 2021, became the third team ever to lose 120 games in a season. Their fall has been breathtaking. In 2021, the White Sox won 93 games and captured the American League Central crown. They were the favorites to win the division again in 2022, but over the last three years, they have won 81 games, 61, and now this. The White Sox have just gone full White Sox. The 2024 White Sox have had three losing streaks of 12 or more games. They tied the 1988 Orioles for the longest losing streak, 21 games, in AL history. They rank among the worst defensive teams in the game. They have, by a wide margin, scored the fewest runs, and their ERA is the second highest. I feel for White Sox fans because watching this product is not only a waste of time, it's an abomination. I can commiserate with this. I covered those 88 Orioles every day for the Baltimore Sun newspaper. That team lost its first 21 games, demolishing the record for the most consecutive losses to start a season. Finally, in game 22, the Orioles scored a 9-0 victory against, ironically enough, the White Sox. Those Orioles finished 54-107. and These White Sox lost their 107th game with a month remaining in the season. And it's official. That is loss number 121. And now with their 121st loss, the White Sox have replaced 62 Mets as the worst team in modern Major League history. As Casey Stengel often said, you can look it up.